What's up guys, so today we're gonna do the lab 3, a lab on algorithms which will get you a really good feel about big O notation and why efficiency is important. This will be super important when you guys learn more about algorithms in a future class. So let's take a look at this. So what I really suggest is you guys look at the shorts. So those are videos done by the CS50 staff where they explain each algorithm in depth. But let's quickly go through each of the uh, algorithms that we'll need to evaluate. Uh, so basically what this problem will ask us to do is to run uh, some mystery sort 1, sort 2 and sort 3 algorithms. We know that one of them will be bubble sort, another will be selection sort and a third one will be merge sort. Depending on the speed of the algorithm, we'll have to decipher which one is which. So we need to have a good understanding of how each one works. So bubble sort works like that. So let's see. So basically we compare adjacent values. So let's say this is our array. We'll compare pair five with one. Since five is greater than one, five goes to the right of one. Then we compare five with four. Five is greater than four, so four goes to the right. 5 with 2, 5 goes to the right. Now 5 is not greater than 8, so this stays the same. So this is called bubble sort because at the end of each iteration, uh, this will be two for loops, but at the end of the inner for loop, uh, the highest value will be placed at the back of the array. So we're bubbling up the, the uh, largest value. So this is really cool good website called Big O Cheat Sheet gives you the Big O notations of the major algorithms. So let's take a look at bubble sort. So the worst case scenario is O n squared. So let's look at the implementation. We basically have two for loops. So we'll basically place the largest value at the end and then we'll do everything again for the first values. Then after this, so five will be placed here. We're gonna do that for one, two, four, so on and so forth. So that's big O of n squared, which is very inefficient, but that's for the worst case scenario. However, if the array is already sorted, uh, basically there is, uh, well, we can see that it's sorted because in the first pass all the values will already be in the right order so we'll only need one iteration so which means it's O of N so there is a very good scenario where all the elements are already sorted where it's not that inefficient now selection sort finds the smallest so this is my unsorted array we look for the smallest value and then place into a sorted sublist. So then we look at the smallest value of the remaining values, that's 12, and place that on the sorted list. The difference between, so both of them are O n squared in the worst case scenario, but selection sort is O n squared also in the best scenario because we always have to so the, the function or the, the for loop that looks for the minimum value, we always have to look from start to end and the outer loop will also always be running. So basically it's always O n squared, which is pretty bad. So when we want to find uh, the trick to finding the difference in timing between bubble sort and selection sort is looking at a scenario where a bubble sort does really well, so that's with uh, that's with sorted arrays, and selection sort still does really bad. Merge sort will basically always be faster because it's O n log n, so it's a little bit more complicated. You don't need to know in depth, but the way it does is through recursion, we split, we keep on splitting the arrays in half over and over again until they have only one element and then we basically sort them back together so that gives us n log n if you don't completely understand the mechanics of how that works uh, you definitely see that in a future algorithm course where when you have a better understanding of recursion but for now just know that it's n log n and kind of have this picture in mind 
So the way this works is we basically have a bunch of files. Uh, let me actually stop the debugger. I had a debugger running. Let me start uh, lab three. And let me create a new terminal. So I have a new terminal. Let me put down here. Okay. So let's see how that works. So basically I have, I put the program name and a text file. So let's first look at those text files. So we have a bunch of text files. Uh, oh, okay. So we have a bunch of text files on lab three. Let's inspect them. So we have a list of